couple of years ago, I made a video explaining ATAC, what it is, how it works, and what it's for. And in the comments, a lot of you asked for more specific instructions on how to set it up and how to use it to do specific things, which I never got to. But that does sound like the perfect job for T-Rex Labs. Now, if you haven't watched that introductory video to ATAC, you should probably go check it out. But you probably have, because it has hundreds of thousands of views. And the T-Rex Lab channel thus far has not so many. I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video why I think that might be. But for now, ATAC stands for either Android Tactical Assault Kit or Android Team Awareness Kit, depending on which official vocab guidelines you're going with. We're actually supposed to call it the service now. Official vocab guidelines state that force is too aggressive. Now there's a couple of other things that you are going to need for ATAC. You're going to need a map source. You can either download this before you download ATAC or after, it doesn't matter, but you need maps. ATAC is essentially two things. Number one, it is a map loading and map display technology. Uh, it loads a whole bunch of different formats of maps, they either uh, local, things that are on the device or stuff that is available on the internet and streams directly to the device. But remember that these map tools are only half of what ATAC is. Half of it is loading and displaying maps, but the other half is a communication tool. To get you started, I'm gonna send you to download a specific map pack from GitHub. I'll put the instructions in the link below. But a guy named Joshua Fuller has created a repository of maps, which uh, it's only 14 kilobytes. So obviously it's not the maps themselves, but it is the URLs for a whole bunch of online map sources that you can pull from and then see inside of ATAC. So once you download that zip file, it is a relatively simple matter to go into ATAC and then into the menu data packages and plus allows you to select a file that you're going to load into ATAC and like all good old-fashioned software it likes zip files new software doesn't like zip files but old software and technically all software should be able to understand zip files go into the download folder which is probably where that ended up and select that ATAC maps.zip and now you've got maps inside of ATAC. If you click on your map setup button which looks like a folded map you click on mobile uh, and here are a ton of different map sources. These are all servers that will serve you maps. And uh, there's a bunch of them that are here. And depending on where you live in the world, these maps will either work really well or maybe not so well. There's some of these maps that are for the United States only. And some of the maps are gonna be a little bit region specific. For example, I actually really like the Bing hybrid maps for the area of Tennessee that we are in. They just show a lot of stuff really well. Now, there are a few types of maps that I think work better than satellite imagery, but we're gonna talk about those in a future episode once I figure out a better way to access them. But for now, uh, you're done. You have ATAC and you have maps. This was the <laughs> two hardest things to do a couple of years ago, and uh, you're all set up now. Just kidding, there's probably other stuff that you want to do with ATAC, but you now have the capability to poke around inside of the app, see yourself, see different map layers, select the ones that you want, and tinker with some of the other tools. So to get you started, here are a couple of really useful ones. One of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the settings app and change any settings that you wanna change. Uh, you wanna do that even before you read any instruction manuals because that's how, that's how guys learn things. And according to Google Analytics, 99.8% of the viewers are guys. So I'm just gonna tell you, like, that's what you do. Don't read the manual, go straight into the settings, try to figure out what's going on. The second thing you want to do after you monkey with the settings and break ATAC so that it doesn't work anymore is go into the overlay manager, which is this button right next to the map button. And this will show you a bunch of stuff that you may want to turn on and off. If you saved a whole bunch of points that 
have to do with something that you did earlier, this is how you can disable those so they're no longer visible. There are shapes and other members of teams that you can hide or show based on what it is that you're trying to do. But there's also down here in the other overlay setting, some things that you might want to add. So for example, I always turn on grid lines. I really like the military grid system and it's not on a lot of civilian maps. So one of the best ways to learn about it is inside of ATAC. You can turn it on and immediately see it overlaid over whatever maps you want to use, Bing, Google, USGS, Topo, whatever, and begin to familiarize yourself with that grid reference system. Another kind of cool feature that I turn on is the off-screen indicators. This is a little weird, but it's kind of cool. If I am slightly off-screen, there's this little ring that appears so that I can see roughly how far off-screen I am. It's, uh, yeah, kind of useful when there's specific things that I'm trying to keep track of roughly where they are in relation to how far I've scrolled the map the other way. Uh, yeah, that one's surprisingly intuitive. Now, obviously, you can hit this button here to center on where you are. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, and then this little compass thing at the top clicks on that if you lock north up or if you want it to rotate uh, as you rotate and have some flexibility to move the thing around. But if you hold down on that, you will also get your 3D mode turned on. It will let you adjust the map in three-dimensional space. And that is useful if you live in an area with advanced topography, dramatic terrain, and you have loaded the right 3D uh, elevation data into the map. However, um, I think I might save that for a video that gets into slightly more advanced features because one of the first things you want to do when you mess with it is get more accurate three-dimensional data. You do have some inside of here, but it is extremely low resolution. By dropping points, you can mark specific areas. This is probably the easiest way to mark stuff up on a map and highlight specific areas that you want to remember as points. But there's also drawing tools, and drawing tools uh, allow you to draw specific shapes on the map. Now this is great for highlighting specific areas, but drawing tools do more than that. If you draw squares or circles, sometimes you can use those uh, to do other things inside of ATAC. Some of the more advanced features that we will probably go over in future episodes. But now you have a map source and you have an ability to mark that map up with points or with shapes, with labels, or even with uh, this freehand pen that lets you just draw stuff on the map, which is uh, a kind of a handy way to uh, indicate certain things in a good old-fashioned grease pencil markup sort of way. Now, some of these different tools, like the drawing toolbar, pop up and they say sort of persistently on your screen until you close them. So the interface takes a little bit of getting used to. It is something that is occasionally intuitive, but usually not intuitive. So get yourself ATAC, install it, make sure that you have some good maps installed, play around in your area, figure out what map layers look good, figure out what tools are useful for the kind of markup that you want to do. And then, you know, you kind of just have to get used to the interface. One of my favorite features inside of ATAC is the Bloodhound. And the way that you do this uh, is you simply set up a Bloodhound which connects two points. Uh, I connect any points. I'm gonna connect myself to this point down here. And so no matter where I go, I'm always gonna have this line right here that tells me my exact compass heading and the exact distance to that point. And it doesn't have to be a static point. Uh, it could be the distance between me and somebody else who is also moving. Uh, not everything has the obvious name of what it does, but if you scroll through the menu, you will see a whole bunch of really interesting features, and uh, the best way to figure them out is to just uh, experiment or wait until, you know, future videos where we talk about the more advanced things like geofencing uh, and plugins. But remember that these map tools are only half of what ATAC is. Half of it is loading and displaying maps, but the other half is a communication tool. It is XML files. Every point that you have just dropped, every shape that you have just drawn, pictures and various other messages are XML files that can be sent from one version of ATAC on one phone to other installations of ATAC on other phones. So we are going to do that right now. Now, I know that most of you want a fancy offline decentralized communication tool that will allow you to do this without the benefit of the internet. And so do I. But let's 
crawl before we run here. If you're watching this video, then the internet is working for you. So if you have ATAC on one phone, get yourself ATAC on another phone. Same thing, you get yourself the Play Store, you download the maps, and now you have two ATOC installs that are relatively the same. And if they're both connected to the same Wi-Fi, they will actually see each other. You will be able to send messages through the contact pane, and you will be able to send some of your drawings, or your points, or other stuff that you have saved inside of ATAC. But what if you aren't on the same Wi-Fi? What if you're outside, as you should be when you are using ATAC? Well, in that case, we need to put these things on the same virtual network, and we're gonna use a tool called Zero Tier. So, to do that, you go to the Zero Tier website, set up a new account, and then create a new network. You can name it whatever you want, and it is free for up to 25 users. Then, on each phone, you got to install the Zero Tier app on the Play Store, and then you go in and say Add Network. You go in and you type the network ID of the network that you have just created. Now, when you connect both of these devices to the same network, they have an encrypted bit of communication in between each device. It doesn't matter that this one is on Wi-Fi and this one is on AT&T. It wouldn't matter if they were on different networks at opposite sides of the country. As long as they have internet and they are connected to the zero tier VPN, they appear on a local network and all of the traffic in between them is encrypted. And if we go to ATAC, we will actually see, if you go to the contact tab, that we have a set of uh, chat rooms, but we also have individual users. I can see this phone's user and I can see this phone's user. You can set the names, you can set the groups, you can set the icon and the colors, and you can group people into chat rooms if you have more than two. But right now, I have uh, a really simple and powerful thing. Two ATAC devices that talk to each other, regardless of what network they are attached to, all the communication between them is encrypted, and we can not only send text messages, but also any of the map markup, any of the XML files, any photos, anything that we want ATAC to activate and share between users. I can send stuff to specific people individually, or I can send stuff to entire groups and entire chat rooms, which I can also create and manage inside of here. And it's actually really impressive that ATAC can do this with without a central server. Yes, Zero Tier is creating a private network for these things to be inside of, but this is done on a peer-to-peer kind of ad hoc basis, which is neat. Now, there are such things as dedicated ATAC servers, which gives you more capability. Instead of sharing individual files between groups and things like that, you can have whole data packages that push themselves into phones, and uh, there's just a whole bunch of more coordination stuff that you can do. So. As we get more advanced in our conversation about ATAC, maybe we will talk about servers. But for now, we have devices with maps, and they can also communicate. We have now got two devices which are configured with ATAC. They have mapping data, and they have the ability to communicate with one another. Not only their individual locations, but any markup data that they put on the map, any cursor on target data, and encrypted text messages back and forth. Now, of course, these devices are still dependent on the internet, but this is something that you can use to go out and train and experiment with and just learn right now while you wait on that next magical decentralized communication solution that is hopefully uh, in the wings. If you have an Android device, right now, this very moment, I want you to go to the Play Store and get ATAC. Quick Privacy note, when you download ATAC and install it, it's gonna ask for a lot of permissions. And I understand if you don't want to give it all the permissions, but I do think that it's asking for them for a pretty good reason. If you're gonna be using this thing for mapping applications, then it's gonna want your location data. If you're streaming data, uh, mapping data from various servers, it's gonna need network access. If you have offline stuff that you wanna load into it, it's gonna need local storage access. If you're gonna be taking pictures to send to other people, it's gonna want camera access. So yes, it asks for a lot of permissions, but it kinda needs those permissions to do the stuff that you want it to do. And I have 
confirmed that everything that I'm doing with ATAC works basically flawlessly, whether it is on a modern Samsung phone or an older Pixel phone, which is running Graphene and not Google Play services. For all of its faults, for all of its clunkiness and its old fashioned interface and the fact that it was basically built by committees inside of the government, I will say this for ATAC. It does everything that it does really well without depending on other stuff. Whether it is loading map data, whether it is loading zip files, it doesn't depend on other people's code or other people's platforms, which is really nice. And when you load a bunch of maps from Bing or Google or places like that, it lets you save those as offline maps without asking a whole bunch of legal questions and popping up a bunch of terms of service agreements. So that's kind of nice too. Although maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that in the video. Maybe, uh, maybe that was supposed to be a secret, but it is something that you can do inside of ATAC. So if you have one phone, use this as your mapping app for a while. It's not gonna do turn by turn navigations without installing a couple of plugins, but it is gonna be something that you can use to go outside as you do your terrain navigation and other stuff which you should be doing. And if you have friends that you would like to interact with, get them to install ATAC, set up that zero tier server because it's free, connect the phones to that, and now you can interoperate using ATAC, sending each other texts, sending each other uh, images, sending each other your locations and your map annotations. Obviously this works best if you are physically in roughly the same proximity, but technically it works no matter where you are. So that's another thing that you can begin to train. Those are the two things that I want you to try to do if at all possible. And then the third thing that I want you to do is very important. As we make more ATAC content, I want to know specifically from you what you want to be able to do. What is your use case? What are the missions that you are trying to accomplish? Because that's gonna drive the sort of stuff that I experiment with and make the tutorials for. I think there's definitely gonna be a more advanced uh, video that explains some of the more advanced mapping features. How you actually run the offline maps, where you get better three-dimensional map data so that you can have accurate contour lines and three-dimensional views of the mapping space exactly as it is in real life. And how you use those 3D mapping tools for useful intelligence gathering. Um, but also, I think some of you probably want some of the communication tools. And if you look through the plugins on Google Play, you will see a ton of plugins for ATAC. Things that let it control drones, things that let it give you turn-by-turn -turn navigations on American roads, things that let you expand the capabilities of ATAC in, well, significant ways. So rather than just making tons of content about every possible thing that you could do with ATAC, I'd like you to help me narrow it down. What do you want to do with ATAC? What do you want ATAC to do for you? What do you want me to tell you about ATAC? Uh, you can just put all that in the comments. That would be great. Now, the other thing that I was gonna do is mention why I think the T-Rex Labs videos aren't getting the same kind of attention as big T-Rex Arms videos, and that is, it's a new channel. But there's also another reason. If you've been watching the T-Rex Arms channel over a long period of time, you'll see that T-Rex Arms videos get fewer eyeballs now than they did in the past. And maybe that's because we're just, you know, losing our edge. But I actually think that there may be some shenanigans going on from, you know, Google and the algorithm. And if you look back at early T-Rex Labs videos from the far distant past of last month, you will see that they were getting a lot of views until a very specific point. And I think that point was when I said this. Still is something that you can install ATAC on, use as a Are we allowed to say on, uh, on, on uh, videos that talk about government control and that, uh, we'll see. So uh, yeah, so I guess, I guess we, uh, we did see. So uh, once again, share this video with any of your friends who are interested in ATAC and the other labs videos with any of your friends who are interested in those things because they're probably not gonna find these videos on their own. The YouTube algorithm is probably not going to show them to people. So if this is interesting, if this is helpful, Say something about it in the comments, say something about it to your real, actual, real life, organic friends, and we will together learn how to use ATAC a little bit better for that move, shoot, communicate stuff. And as a communication tool that is, well, despite the fact that it's made by the government, 
considerably more civilian friendly than a lot of the stuff that's being produced by Google. I don't have a cool outro for this video, so I was just going to uh, say nothing, but I've already failed at that.